the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Welcome back to the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast, where we dive deep into the lives of historical figures who shape the course of history. I'm your host, Rebecca Larson. Today, we're exploring the stories of two remarkable women from medieval Europe, Eleanor de Bowen, Duchess of Gloucester, and Blanche of Navarre, Queen of France. Both of these women lived lives marked by tragedy, resilience, and powerful family connections that had long-lasting impacts on their respective kingdoms. In the first part, we'll look at the life of Eleanor de Bowen, and in the second, we'll shift focus to Blanche of Navarre, a queen who faced an incredible amount of adversity during her time on the French throne. But let's begin with Eleanor. Eleanor de Bowen was born around 1366 into one of the most prestigious families in England. Her father, Humphrey de Bowen, the 7th Earl of Hereford, Essex, and Northampton, was a powerful nobleman with strong ties to the royal family. Eleanor's mother, Joan Fitzalan, further secured her place in the upper echelons of society. But it's Eleanor's maternal lineage that's particularly notable. She was the great-granddaughter of King Edward I, making her bloodline one of royal significance. The de Bowen family wielded significant influence. Eleanor's position at the heart of England's noble web positioned her for a marriage that would place her at the center of the political stage. In 1376, Eleanor married Thomas of Woodstock, the youngest son of King Edward III. This union further cemented her status in the medieval aristocracy. Thomas was given the title of Duke of Gloucester by his nephew, King Richard II, a promotion that made Eleanor a duchess as well. While their marriage was politically advantageous, it's believed that Eleanor and Thomas shared a deep affection for each other, a somewhat rare occurrence among noble marriages of the time, where alliances were primarily political. They had four children, though their eldest son, Humphrey, tragically died young, while the others would play important roles in the future of England's political landscape. Like many of the time, Eleanor's life was fraught with challenges. Thomas was one of the Lord's Appellant, a group of noblemen who sought to curb the power of Richard II. This rebellion was a direct challenge to royal authority, and though it briefly succeeded, it eventually led to tragedy for Eleanor. In 1397, Thomas was arrested by Richard II's forces and sent to Calais, where he was secretly murdered, likely under the king's orders. Eleanor's world was shattered. She was now a widow, her husband branded a traitor, and her family's fortune severely diminished. But her connection to the de Bowen name and her royal bloodline protected her from the worst of Richard's retribution. Following her husband's death, Eleanor sought solace in the church. Her life took a profound turn toward piety when she joined a convent. There, Eleanor embraced a life of spiritual contemplation, withdrawing from the politics of court. Her decision to join a convent wasn't unusual for widows of noble birth, but it reflects Eleanor's deep sense of loss and desire for peace after the chaos of her early years. She was likely also influenced by her sister, Mary de Bowen, who had become the wife of Henry Bolingbroke, future King Henry IV. Despite their different paths, both sisters played pivotal roles in shaping their early Lancaster dynasty. Although Eleanor's life might seem to pale in comparison to her more politically prominent contemporaries, her influence is undeniable. Her children continue the de Bowen lineage, and her personal piety helped cement the tradition of noble women retiring to religious life, a common theme in medieval aristocracy. Her role as Duchess of Gloucester, the widow of a powerful figure like Thomas of Woodstock, placed her at the heart of one of England's most volatile periods. Eleanor de Bowen died on the 3rd of October, 1399, and was buried at the chapel of St. Edmund, in Westminster Abbey. Now let's turn to our second story of this episode, The Life of Blanche of Navarre, 
Queen of France. Like Eleanor de Bowen, Blanche's life was shaped by political alliances, royal marriages, and the ever-shifting balance of power in medieval Europe. Blanche of Navarre was born around 1331 into the royal family of Navarre, a small but strategically important kingdom in the Pyrenees that often found itself caught between the ambitions of France and Spain. Her father, King Philip III of Navarre, was known as Philip the Noble, and her mother, Joan II of Navarre, was a formidable queen in her own right, ruling Navarre after her own father's complicated succession to the French throne. Blanche's royal bloodline made her a valuable pawn in European politics, and like so many noble women of her time, her marriage was destined to be an important political arrangement. In 1350, Blanche married Charles IV, King of France, at just 19 years old, becoming his third queen consort. Charles IV, known as the Fair, was nearing the end of his reign when they wed, and their marriage was as much about political strategy as it was about securing heirs for the French crown. Unfortunately, Blanche's reign as queen consort was short-lived. Charles IV died just six years after their wedding in 1356, leaving Blanche a widow at 25 with no children. This lack of an heir would have significant consequences for France. Charles's death marked the end of the direct Capetian line that had ruled France for centuries, leading to a succession crisis that would eventually contribute to the outbreak of the Hundred Years' War. Blanche's position as queen without an heir placed her in a precarious position. She was a queen dowager in a volatile time, but despite these challenges, Blanche managed to retain her dignity and status. She returned to Navarre, where she would spend the remainder of her life in relative peace, far from the turmoil of French court. Unlike many of her contemporaries, who were forced to remarry for political alliances, Blanche remained a widow for the rest of her life, perhaps an indication of her unwillingness to be used again as a political pawn. Blanche's widowhood coincided with one of the most politically complex periods in European history. Her Navarrese roots placed her in the middle of a tug-of-war between France and England, with both powers vying for influence in the small but strategically vital kingdom. Although she largely stayed out of these political battles, Blanche's family ties meant that her life was never truly free from their shadow. Her brother, Charles II of Navarre, known as Charles the Bad, was a notorious figure during this period, frequently switching sides between England and France in an attempt to secure more power for Navarre. Blanche's role as Queen Dowager, while less dramatic than her brother's political maneuvers, reflected the quieter resilience and influence that royal women could exert, even when sidelined from direct governance. Blanche's life might seem understated compared to other queens, but her significance is twofold. First, her inability to provide an heir for Charles IV marked the end of the Capetian dynasty and set the stage for the French succession crisis. Secondly, her long widowhood, unmarred by further political marriages, allowed her to carve out a unique position in the medieval world, a former queen consort who quietly lived out her days in relative peace. She died on the 5th of October, 1398, having outlived many of her contemporaries, and was buried in Navarre. From Eleanor de Bowen's life during the Wars of the Roses to Blanche of Navarre's brief reign in France, both of these women's stories highlight the vital roles noble and royal women played in shaping the political landscapes of their time. Whether they were engaged in the thick of political intrigue or choosing a life of religious devotion, these women helped to navigate the shifting tides of power in medieval Europe. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Eleanor de Bowen and Blanche of Navarre. If you enjoy the show and would like to show your support, maybe you're looking for a commercial-free episode, early access, and patron-exclusive content, head on over to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, 
dot com slash tutors dynasty and consider becoming a patron for as little as three dollars a month you can show your support thanks for listening you can follow me on social media as at tutors dynasty and visit tutors dot com for more historical content and be sure to check out my new shop for the holidays see you next week the tutors dynasty podcast